Hospitals overflowing in China. Video showing patients outside the emergency room, in hallways, stair landings, and even outside restrooms. Corpses on the ground, long service wait times, and obscuring cause of death. A father sharing what he saw inside a Chinese crematory. China's COVID-19 death toll coming under scrutiny. One doctor's account may shed light on why. An energy shortage hitting China amid freezing winter temperatures. Gas and heating suspended from at times. And a Chinese state-owned company striking a deal with the Taliban to extract oil from an Afghan field. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China is facing a host of issues. The most concerning one, COVID-19. Infection numbers continue to rise, and hospitals in Shanghai and other cities are overflowing with patients. Here's more. Beds line the corridors of the emergency treatment area and main lobby on Thursday. Most of them elderly and several were breathing with oxygen tanks. A notice advised patients that they would have to wait an average of five hours to be seen. This has become a common scene across China. With emergency wards filled to the brink and patients lining up for hours to get treatment, China had defended its COVID handling measures and said the country's epidemic situation is controllable. However, videos from China tell a different story. The collapse of the medical system, pharmacies out of stock, funeral homes overflowing. The Chinese regime now defines COVID deaths as death by pneumonia and respiratory failure for patients who had the virus. The World Health Organization criticized the regime for underrepresenting the severity of its outbreak and said the definition was too narrow. Disease experts outside China say its approach misses other widely recognized types of fatal COVID complications, from blood clots to heart attacks, sepsis and kidney failure. An epidemiologist with the University of Hong Kong says at least one million COVID-related deaths in China this winter is quite possible. Xi Wenrong reporting, NTD News. A video clip posted on Chinese social media highlighting just how crowded Beijing hospitals are. Inside one of them, overcrowding extends far beyond the emergency room. In corridors, patients can be seen lying next to heaters or at the base of stair landings with their relatives alongside them. The hallway to the elevator also blocked with patients. The problem extends to just outside the restrooms. The overcrowding is so severe that some of them don't have beds. Instead, they lie on the ground while waiting for treatment. Chinese authorities are expecting a major travel boom. On Friday, they said they are anticipating 2.1 billion total passenger trips to be made during the Lunar New Year holiday, with travelers across China moving by road, rail, water and flight. If that prediction proves true, it means double the trips made during the same time last year, which total 1.05 billion. China's Vice Minister of Transportation, Xu Chengguan, noted this year's Lunar New Year travel rush will start on January 7th and end on February 15th, a total of 40 days. Compared with previous years, this year's Lunar New Year travel rush will be the most uncertain, complex and challenging one in recent years, as the peak of passenger flow and the peak of the pandemic overlap. Daily passenger flights scheduled for the season are averaging about 11,000. That's around three-quarters of pre-COVID-19 travel levels in 2019. A report from inside a crematory in China. Bodies stored on the ground. Long death records of young people. Staffers obscuring cause of death for COVID-19 patients. NTD spoke to a father in China about what he saw when he sent his son's body for cremation. A father in China grieving the loss of his 27-year-old son to the virus. At first, he didn't have any symptoms. He didn't have a fever or a headache. But when he passed away, he felt like as if his throat had been cut by a knife. He was also breathing heavily. I didn't expect it to be so bad. Maybe he could have survived had we sent him to the hospital earlier. 
Li Bin is a resident from China's Anhui province. It took the virus five days to claim his son's life. When Li sent his son's body to the local crematory, he was shocked by what he saw. My God, the crematory was overloaded to the point of laying bodies on the ground. A staffer there told me, "Look at this smoke billowing out of our crematory's chimneys." The local crematories can process 80 bodies per day, but Li said many residents can get services for their loved ones even after waiting over a week. Li also saw some obituaries of the dead when he went to pay for his son's service. Quite a lot of the dead that crematory processed were between 30 to 50 years old. The youngest was 16, who also died of the virus. I saw this information on the staffer's computer. The death certificate issued by the hospital said his son died of COVID-19 infection. But after I went to the crematory, a high-level staffer there told me the hospital was really daring to list the cause of death as COVID-19. The staffer said authorities have requested that all local crematories and hospitals avoid listing COVID-19 as the cause of death. You can write lung infections or respiratory tract infections or whatever, but no hospital dares to put COVID-19 as the cause of death. The local police station gave Li similar accounts. Now Li is urging people to stay aware of the danger of the virus as it sweeps through China. He adds that it's not just the elderly at risk, but younger people as well. The way China calculates its COVID-19 death toll is coming under scrutiny. Beijing has kept its virus death toll at a little over 5,000. That says funeral homes across China reportedly overflow amid a massive surge in infections. Some reports may shed light on why. A doctor working at a Beijing hospital said he found a note on his desk. The note asked medical staff to avoid listing COVID-19 as the primary cause of death for patients. That's according to a report from the New York Times. Screenshots of similar warnings are circulating on Chinese social media. In one of them, a group chat conversation also asks doctors not to list the virus as patients' cause of death. Beijing has narrowed the way it counts COVID-19 deaths. In the West, all patients who died after being infected with COVID-19 are included in the virus death toll. But in China, only those who died of respiratory failure caused by COVID-19 count as virus-related deaths. COVID-19 patients who died of pre-existing conditions or other chronic illnesses don't count, even if the infection may have worsened those conditions. Next, we'd like to take a minute to answer a question from our viewers about the so-called white lung phenomenon in China. We covered the story on Wednesday. White lung refers to how some COVID-19 patients' lungs turn partially white on CT scans. The white appearance indicates fluid and infection in the lungs. Healthy lungs should appear black on CT scans. Some viewers commented that it's a common phenomenon with lung infections and is nothing special. But there are a few differences worth noting about the current issue in China. First, let's look back on 2020, when the CCP virus, which causes COVID-19, first started spreading widely in China's Wuhan city. Many patients started turning up with white lung. Soon, it was discovered that common pneumonia or lung infections were not the cause. Instead, it was a new kind of pneumonia that existing medicine struggled to treat. The new disease caused massive deaths in the city. As the COVID-19 virus developed outside China the past three years, it's been getting less lethal. Unlike earlier variants, the latest strain, known as Omicron, rarely attacks the lungs. But now, doctors across China have been reporting the white lung phenomenon again. Sometimes, in as much as 20 percent of their patients, some have reportedly died. At the same time, funeral homes across the country are overcrowded. These issues do not line up with the experiences other countries have had with Omicron. For now, the cause remains unclear as concerns rise and nations request answers from Beijing. The Chinese Communist Party has a history of concealing or underreporting health data. Starting Sunday, virus hit China will no longer enforce border controls. 1.4 billion people ready to usher in a long-awaited return to international travel, but travel curbs are racking up worldwide ahead of the reopening. 
At least 18 countries have introduced restrictions on arriving Chinese travelers. That's including Greece, Germany and Sweden as of Thursday. We continue to ask China for more rapid... Those decisions came after the World Health Organization to China's official virus data was under-reporting its outbreak and as concerns grow about the threat of new variants. But Chinese officials and state media have struck a defiant tone, defending China's handling of the outbreak, playing down the severity of the surge and denouncing foreign travel requirements. We also propose a discussion on the need for pre-testing. Following the European China Union's suggestion of pre-departure testing for Chinese passengers, China's foreign ministry warned a possible reciprocation on Friday, saying the European Union should be objective and fair. Also in Europe, the Chinese embassy in Paris criticized French media reports about the COVID-19 outbreak in China listing five examples of what they called nonsense. Those statements are China's epidemic is out of control, Chinese vaccines are ineffective, the zero COVID-19 policy has failed, China's COVID-19 data is distorted, and China imprisons people for three years, referring to lockdown measures. But some China-based internet users are disagreeing with the embassy commenting that the five so-called nonsense statements from French media are actually honest and objective. An energy shortage is hitting northern China hard this winter. Earlier this week, one of China's northernmost cities garnered public attention. A heating company in Hugan City issued a notice saying it would stop providing heating services on Thursday, citing high coal prices. The company said it suffered a loss of $1.1 million last year and that local authorities didn't help with subsidies. The temperature in the region right now is as low as negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Local media reported that authorities have since intervened and that the company did not halt heating services. But another heating company in the same city did. One resident told local media that the company turned off heating multiple times in the last month, each time for three to five days, without informing residents beforehand. Over in northern China's Hebei province, household gas services in some cities were limited to daytime cooking hours last month, meaning stoves and other appliances could not be used during off hours. Likewise, heating systems in some homes that use gas were also shut off. Temperatures in the region can drop below freezing this time of year, with the lowest reaching 7 degrees Fahrenheit. The situation proves especially hard for households with elderly people or young children. Authorities responded to local complaints, explaining the gas company didn't purchase sufficient gas to offer full service. Next, an update on Afghanistan. The Middle Eastern country is set to sign a contract with a Chinese company. The deal will allow the company to extract oil from an Afghan field. The country's acting mining minister announced the decision Thursday. The Chinese company is based in the Xinjiang region, or eastern Turkestan as its native Uyghurs call it. It's a 25-year contract. Over the first three years, the Chinese company will invest $150 million a year into the project. That figure would then increase to $540 million a year. Afghanistan is currently controlled by the Taliban. The agreement is set to become the first major resource extraction deal the Taliban administration has signed with a foreign company since taking power in 2021. A separate Chinese state-owned company is also in talks with the Taliban over the operation of a copper mine. Electric vehicle maker Tesla cutting electric car prices in China. The Friday decrease marks the company's second price cut in the country in less than three months. This as the demand weakens in the world's largest auto market. U.S.-based Tesla also cut prices on its best-selling Model Y and Model 3 EVs in Japan, South Korea and Australia. The reduced price tags were part of an effort to help stoke demand especially for products coming from Tesla's Shanghai factory. That's according to a person with direct knowledge of the issue. The cut is also the first major move since Tesla appointed its lead executive for China and Asia, Tom Chu, to oversee global business. 
Zhu is based in Shanghai. Tesla shares fell about 6 percent in pre-market trading after the price cuts. A U.S. warship sailed through the sensitive Taiwan Strait on Thursday. The U.S. military has referred to it as routine activity in the area. Here's a closer look at reactions to its journey. The move has angered China, though, which claims autonomy in the region, despite objections from Taiwan's democratically elected government. The U.S. military issued a statement saying its guided missile destroyers transit through the Taiwan Strait demonstrates the United States' commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific. The narrow Taiwan Strait has been a frequent source of military tension since communists took power in mainland China in 1949. While other nations step up testing for Chinese tourists, countries in Southeast Asia are saying no to new requirements. The region is pinning its hopes on the return of Chinese tourists and their big bucks to boost the economy. Here are the details. China is set to reopen its borders this coming Sunday. Thailand is expecting at least 5 million Chinese tourist arrivals this year. That's almost half the number before the pandemic. I'm also afraid of COVID-19, but I still want to work. I'm scared of both COVID-19 and starving, so I still want the Chinese travelers to come. I want to have customers. Indonesia is another beneficiary. Businesses in Bali said they were gearing up to welcome back Chinese tourists, despite concerns over the outbreak in China. Of course, we are concerned about the COVID-19 resurgence in China because it is quite a harmful virus. But as for management and I, we think that the government will make the best choice, such as screenings, etc., to keep the Indonesian people safe from the virus. Bali tourism officials say the island will beef up its defenses, with workers taking a second booster vaccine this month. China is one of the largest sources of tourists to Indonesia. About 2 million Chinese tourists visited the country in 2019, accounting for around 13 percent of all tourist arrivals. Aside from Thailand and Indonesia, Cambodia and Singapore also won't test inbound Chinese travelers for COVID-19. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. North Korea is a very useful tool for China in terms of keeping its uh, adversaries, its self, self-declared adversaries, uh, the Americans, the Japanese, etc., occupied, focused on North Korea instead of looking at things like Taiwan. Will China help the U.S. stop North Korea's provocation? We spoke to Grant Newsham, senior fellow of the Center for Security Policy, for more. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.